In this video, we're doing some investigating work on an old school drag car. It's a 1964 Ford Fairlane, and this thing's been brush painted. It's been sitting in a backyard for years, but we're gonna uncover some of that history by stripping off some of the paint that's on the door of this car. Before I get too carried away, I wanna remind you to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and give this video a thumbs up if you like it. We found this car several years ago. It was down in Soddy Daisy, Tennessee, just a few miles south of us here in Dayton and this car was rough. I mean, it was in somebody's backyard. It had all the wheels and tires off of it. It was just sitting on jack stands, literally sitting in a mud hole. So, you know, this thing had been kind of forgotten, um, but a previous owner had actually brush painted this thing with just white, maybe house paint. I'm not really sure exactly what kind of paint they used, but they brush painted it and they brush painted over everything. Every piece of this thing was just white. So, you know, I could see initially, as soon as I walked up on it, I could see that they painted right over the old decals and stickers. And I was hopeful that they had also painted over the hand lettering that was supposed to be on the side of the car because the owner of the car actually had a picture of it and from the 1970s. And on the side of it, it said borrowed time. And, uh, you know, it was a cool 70s style drag car. It had aluminum slots on it. It was black and it had this lettering. So, you know, I was hopeful that I could take a little bit of time and effort and strip that paint off to reveal what was underneath. So before we could do any of the investigation work, we had to actually get the thing home, which was a challenge in itself. So I called my buddy Kyle. He went down there with his rollback. And the first order of business was getting tires and wheels on this thing, which proved to be a challenge as well because it's a Ford you would assume that it has Ford pattern wheels all the way around. Well, it did have Ford on the front, but it had Chevy on the back. So it was a, just a mess trying to get this thing drug out of the mud hole. And as you can see in some of these pictures, you can see how deep the mud was when you see how dirty those tires are. Those were clean tires when they were taken down there, but by the time they got home, this thing was filthy. So. You know, as we pulled it home, these are just roll around tires and wheels, and you can see that it's got Chevy rallies on the back. And that's because this car has a Chevy or a GM 12 bolt rear end under it, which is kind of an odd choice because Ford has the nine inch. I mean, that's the go-to rear end for almost any drag car. So anyways, they put a, a GM 12 bolt under the back of this thing and further investigation saw that they had put a Ford Econoline front axle under it. Again, I didn't know anything about the history of the car, so I started posting around on Facebook, and immediately a guy named Brandon, he said he remembered the car from back in the day. Uh, maybe one of his neighbors or somebody had it, um, but he said that it had a Boss 302 engine in it back in the day. And, uh, you know, it didn't have any, any other information other than that it was built by Genuine Auto Parts, which is a local parts store, and it was driven by Don Sparks. Uh, and it would have raced locally, like at Brainerd Optimus Drag Strip, maybe down at Ringgold Drag Strip, also called Drag City. Um, but other than that, there really wasn't a lot of history to go by. There wasn't a lot of pictures to go by other than what the guy gave me, which was a weird piece together picture that didn't show a whole lot. So I was still hopeful that we could uncover some of that history by stripping that paint off. So I went, just went to the dollar store and got some oven cleaner and started stripping away at it. So sprayed the oven cleaner on there and it started lifting and, and bubbling up that white paint. And then I carefully stripped the white paint off and, and tried not to disturb what was underneath. Uh, but you'll see here in these pictures, I didn't take any video of this because this was several years ago. I didn't even know I was gonna be doing YouTube stuff by then, but took pictures of it anyways, just for documentation's sake. And you can see, uh, after probably an hour or so of work, you can see the result. And uh, it kind of shows you what would normally be underneath if you were to try to strip paint off of a car, um, what would be underneath it is probably not very beautiful. And it kind of goes back to that Dennis Collins Shelby Mustang of, you know, the patina on that car was a little too good to be true as far as stripping off black spray paint and having that underneath it. So. We won't go into detail on that. If you want to see a little more detail of my observations of that Shelby car, um, you can click on the link. I'll put it up here or down in the description. You can look at that later if you'd like. 
Uh, but the real purpose of this is this Ford Fairlane because it was a cool little car, even though it was hacked up, even though it was, you know, hadn't seen any action in probably 40, 45 years, something like that. Still a really neat piece and it was real cheap. I think I gave $800 for it or something like that. And uh, obviously we spent a little bit of money dragging the thing home. We spent a little bit of money putting some tires and wheels on it. We put these Fenton front runners on there and some just aluminum slots and slicks on the back so that it would fill up that wheel opening because they were cut way out. Um, so that really helped this thing's appearance. We cleaned up what we could clean. Um, of course, we didn't strip all of that white paint off to see what was underneath because that would have been a big major job. So we didn't do that. But what we did do was make this thing presentable and uh, you know, a couple months later I put it on the market. I ended up selling it to a guy named Bryant Dalton. Uh, he went on to race with the Southeast Gassers, not with this car, but with another. And uh, eventually he did sell this car to a guy in West Tennessee. So, you know, it's got a future ahead of it. Hopefully it'll get restored uh, to somewhat of its former glory. We're not sure exactly what is gonna happen with it as far as restoration goes. Uh, but hopefully this thing will always be an old-school, nostalgic drag car. So part of what inspired me to put this video together is, number one, this is a cool old race car, uh, but number two, it kind of plays into that Dennis Collins Shelby Mustang, the mystery and the, the lack of history on that car. It kind of plays into what we did with this Fairlane because we didn't know a whole lot about it, and... 1964 Ford Fairlane could very easily be passed off as a Thunderbolt uh, because those cars, you know, they're extremely rare, extremely valuable, and they're a little bit hard to document when you consider how race cars evolved through the years. So similar to the Dennis Collins Shelby, that car obviously evolved very quickly uh, as far as having the front end cut off and all that kind of stuff where all the numbers are gone. Uh, this car probably lived a similar life where it started out as a regular passenger car and got cut up through the years. So, you know, we could have very well uh, believed that it was a Thunderbolt car. Um, there are obviously telltale signs that show that it wasn't, but we could have made it out to be a Thunderbolt car or some sort of mysterious car. But the reality of the situation is that it was just a regular 64 Ford Fairlane uh, that somebody had cut up and turned into a race car back in the 60s and 70s. So, you know, there wasn't a whole lot of a, a, you know, a big story or a big sensational story behind this car. It was just a cool car. And the fact that we were able to strip off some of that paint and show that hand lettering bleeding through, I thought that was cool in itself. So I wanted to show you, uh, especially for some of those guys who commented on the Dennis Collins video that I posted last week, uh, about how you can strip paint off and it will have this beautiful patina. I wanted to show you that I do have experience doing that. I've done it on a couple of different cars to try to see what's underneath. And this was a perfect example of that because it actually had something cool underneath. But you can also see from where I had to strip that off of there and you know get some abrasive materials that it did damage the paint underneath. Uh, and if we'd done this across the entire car, there's no way that it would have had a beautiful patina. It would have been kind of scratched up and scarred up a little bit from just having to do that level of detail. Um, and I'm not saying that it's not possible. It is possible, especially with spray can paint that's, that's lacquer based. That stuff does come off pretty easily with lacquer, uh, lacquer thinner. It kind of melts off of there. but in the case of this car where I had personal experience with it, it wasn't that easy. I probably spent an hour or two just on this little section of the door trying to make it look cool. So, you know, I do have experience with it. I have done this before. Uh, I've documented quite a few drag cars through the years. And, uh, you know, it's not always as glorious as we want it to be. You know, this particular car, this old Fairlane, you know, that could have been a Thunderbolt. It could have been one of the lost Thunderbolts. It was stashed away in somebody's backyard. I hadn't seen the light of day in who knows how long. It could have been. And I, you know, when I bought it, I was wishing that it was. But the fact of the matter is that it was a regular Fairlane. It had lived a regular life of just getting beat on at the drag strip. 
and it had lived a, a regular life of just being neglected for lots of years. So I wanted to pass that along to you guys. I know you love it when I dig up an old race car and uh, even when it doesn't have a glorious history, even when there's not national event wins or national records or championships or anything, uh, you know, just the fact that this is the bones of an old race car is cool enough as it is. We don't have to oversell it or over promise on this car's history. So hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll keep on cranking out this content just as long as we can. We're always digging around for old school drag cars and old hot rods and any history we can get. So stay tuned, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, and we'll keep following up with new videos every week. Thank you for watching.